the idea here is the MindX study, and I think this is an extraordinarily important study for a variety of reasons. Uh, in MindAct, uh, well, let's step back a minute. The, the whole idea is that we're doing an incredible job now uh, with a bread and butter breast cancer that we treat. I think that 67% uh, of all breast cancer uh, is ER positive, zero to three nodes positive, uh, usually T2 and below, that is five centimeters and below. And I think MindAct really has looked at this uh, uh, disease uh, entity uh, and has tried to really, in a prospective manner, uh, really try to figure out how to optimize the therapy. So the idea behind MindAct is they took a probably, I think it's about 67, 6,800 women, mostly in Europe, um, who had this early stage breast cancer. It could be ear positive, HER2 positive, any grade, uh, zero to three nodes positive. Uh, and what they did is that they did a clinical score on them. That is, they did adjuvant online. Uh, and if the adjuvant online predicted a 10-year uh, disease-free, actually five-year, excuse me, five-year um, distant metastasis-free survival was less than 92% when you put all the clinical parameters in, you were to consider clinical high risk. If, however, the predicted disease-free survival was greater than 92%, you were considered low risk, that is with endocrine therapy, given endocrine therapy. So what they then did is they did a genomic risk test as well. And for their genomic risk test, they used a test by Agendi. It's called Mammoprint. It's a 70 gene assay um, that can uh, differentiate low risk versus high risk at, after five years of therapy of distant metastasis. So what they did is that if you were low risk clinically and low risk genomically, you just got hormone therapy. If you were high risk clinically and high risk genomically, you got chemotherapy. And in both of those arms, again, if you had about 6,700 patients, both of those arms were about a third each. So a third of the women, actually maybe 40% of the women, were clinical low, genomic low, they just got hormone therapy. The women who were clinical high, genomic high, were probably about 25% of the patients, they got chemotherapy. So in the middle were about probably, I think, uh, 17, 1,800 women. Uh, and then they were randomized to two basic options, either using the, they were discordant, that means they were either clinically genomically low and clinically high risk or clinically high risk and genomically low risk. Um, of the 17, 16, actually it was a little 1,700 women, uh, I believe about probably three or 400, 500 were clinically low, genomically high, and they were separated. But the important ones were about 1,500 women, 1,400 women, who were clinically high, genomically low. That is women clinically who you would give chemotherapy to in the adjuvant setting. They, the risk was high enough to give them chemotherapy. But the test said they didn't need it. So they randomized those women into two groups. Either they got chemotherapy based on the clinical high or hormone therapy alone based on the genomic low. And the idea behind the trial is that if you had a clinically high risk disease that was genomically low by the genomic assay, your five-year distant metastasis free survival should be at least 92% or higher. Uh, and in fact, what they found in that trial, in that group of patients, is that their five-year distant metastasis free survival was 95%. So what that suggests is that there is a group of patients, a substantial number of women, who basically have a clinical risk of greater than 8% recurrence at five years. So again, a, a, their, their distant metastasis free survival with endocrine therapy alone, in theory, based on clinical risk, was less than 92%. And you could select those women out and not give them chemotherapy based on their genomic test in a prospective clinical trial. This is not retrospective. Most of the studies that have been done have all been retrospective. This is prospective. And so what that means, there's, there's a couple things that come out of this. First of all, about 30 to 40 percent of these women who are clinical low and genomic low don't even need a test. So if you're clinically low, you don't even need a test. And the women who are clinically low and genomically high, their dysmetastasis-free survival with endocrine therapy alone was still in the 90s, mid-90s. So those, you can take those out. So now you take that, pa that group of patients that are clinically high and genomically low, another 25%, you take them out. Suddenly, you've gone from an, a time now where almost, you know, probably two-thirds of the women would get chemotherapy to now only maybe a third. So you've taken chemotherapy away from probably, you know, 30 to 50% of women now who you ordinarily have given it to them before with a substantially spectacular outcome. I mean, we're talking distant metastasis-free survivals at five years of about 93, 94, 95 percent. 
So clearly this is, I believe, I think once this is percolated through uh, um, the community and through the, the oncology community in general, I think this is really a practice changing uh, result. I think that um, the real issue is what genomic tests to use. In this case, they did use a 70 gene assay. It's prospectively what's been confirmed. Um, there are other assays out there. I think that my own bias would be to use an assay that is based on intrinsic subtype, not necessarily ones that have ERPR and HER2 in them, like the 21 gene assay, genomic health basically is RT-PCR for ERPR, HER2, and KS67, among a few other things. I think I would look at assays that use the downstream genes going forward, and there's a few of them out there. Um, and the other thing is that there clearly now are a group of patients who probably what we call luminal A, low-risk luminal A, who really do not derive any benefit from chemotherapy and don't need the toxicity. I think that is a really big deal in a prospective trial. The other thing that's a big deal in this trial is that for all comers, all patients, even the ones getting chemotherapy that are high risk, again, with three or nodes or less, um, even in those women, um, their five-year metastasis free survival is like 91, 92 percent. So we're now in breast cancer. In the most common forms of cancer, breast cancer we treat, we're now in the 90s in terms of, uh, of basically not necessarily being cured of their disease, but basically being free of metastasis at five years and hopefully a little bit longer. So I think we, this really is something that uh, is a big deal.